Segment two, Golden Black Live, I'm joined with, with by with Morgan Burke and Stacy Clarity here. And I, I, I was all ready to say the line. I said, you know, Tuesday, the athletic director is in front of the university presence and, and making a big high-level meeting, but he comes to Golden Black Live on Friday. I don't know if that, what that says for you. Or well, I'm just <laughs> glad I wasn't for the infractions committee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I hear you on that front. <laughs> Obviously, uh, you, and we're going to talk football in this segment, then we want to get into some of the, uh, some of the your, your issues with uh, pay, for pl pay for play and also some of the things that were going on in this week's meetings. But, but uh, you've obviously uh, you've had other things on your mind besides just Purdue athletics, but that's part of being, a, uh, being a, in the position that you are, uh, an elder statesman and athletic director, dumb. The, el the elder hurts my feelings, <laughs> I know, it's, it's, but probably true. But, uh, you know, I think that the athletic directors as a group, when we visited in Dallas in uh, annual meeting uh, in September, I think we looked in the mirror and said we're part of the problem. Uh, we probably in 1997 when uh, we went to more of a representative government as opposed to one vote, one school, um, may have laid back a little bit and said, hey, we're going to treat everybody as an equal around the table. And the reality is uh, while you want people's inputs, you can't be passive. And uh, I'm not saying everybody was passive, but I think you know we, we took a good hard look at our, our uh, approach to, to national governance. And so, to get 351 athletic directors uh, to to agree to eight principles, uh, something we haven't gotten Washington to do, <laughs> yeah, to do lately, true. and and we still have some work to go. But I, I'm I you know I think we 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 could sit there and throw uh, darts at the NCAA. They do a lot of good things. I mean, uh, championships are well run uh, across the board. Um, you know, I think our academic reforms have had good you know good impact. So let's not throw them totally under the bus and if we do we throw ourselves under the bus because they're at the end of the day the NCA is not Mark Emmert it's it's all the member institutions yeah I'm switching gears to football perfect we, we can talk more about that other stuff later. <laughs> we will everyone Thanks. wants to know about the the scheduling and and Notre Dame will you be playing Notre Dame at Lucas Oil next season we're Jack and I are still working Stacy and when we announce it we'll announce kind of a comprehensive uh, look at what we can do I mean that they have a, a, a tricky situation because they, as the Big East imploded, they had to find a way, place for their Olympic sports. Right. And, and to do that, they, they made us a, a conscious choice, which you know, we may have made the same choice if we had been in their shoes, to sell five football games in exchange for being, have access to their bowl games, remain, quote, independent, and, and get their Olympic sports in, a, in, a, in the queue. And, uh, now the Big Ten was it was all or nothing. If you're going to come into the Big Ten, you're going to you're going to be a full fledged member, or or you're not. And that wasn't where they wanted to go. And, and again, that's a call they have to make. Same time, we've gone to nine conference games yeah. in 2016. So our we're part of the problem too because the rotation that we were on right. doesn't work for uh, for them. So right. <laughs> we're uh, we're working on it. Uh, I think we're close. I wouldn't be surprised if in the next within the next few weeks we have something. Uh, to announce, but we, we clearly are, are going to have some changes. That, uh, you know, I'm not going to uh, delude people into thinking the status quo is going to be there. But uh, I'd rather present the whole picture and and talk about some of the other things we've been able to put together, so people get a sense for the for the next few years. So do back to me in a couple weeks. Do you have <laughs> a signed contract with Missouri? Uh, no, but we've had discussions. My, obviously, Mike Alden and I've known each other for a long yeah. time. I think that's a game that we've talked about for. For some time, uh, as, as being something we'd be interested mm -hmm. in, but you know, our our scheduling philosophy will continue to be that we want to, to have one uh, of the, the schools from the equity conferences mm -hmm. here each year, uh, and then you, you are going to fill in your schedule because if you do one home and away, if you run the the numbers, right. that's all you can do. The rest of them have to be uh, uh, play-in games. Now, we'll we'll look at some neutral site opportunities and some other stuff. It's possible that you'd have a six-game home season at it some is. point in time this decade and we may we may offset the revenue with with the neutral site game that that might be a little bit of a rebate for our fans because they, they have a little the, the season ticket price would be a little bit less so we're gonna we're gonna look at all options but I want to put together a, a schedule that will be entertaining to the fans um, it's not easy because the, the teams that you bring in uh, and, and for a guarantee game they want a lot of money and you know we're we're again in our size stadium. We we could give, you know, 20 25 percent of our revenue, and that's 10 percent of, of Michigan or Ohio State's revenue. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just 
just one of those things you have to work on, but I'm, I'm confident that we have some, some storylines coming that you'll enjoy. And one, and one of the things, the challenge has been, too, that you, at least unless something's changed, you've also said you're going to honor your commitments. You've had to, you have right. two FCS teams right. with Southern Illinois next year in Eastern Kentucky in 17, I think it is. And Indiana State. And Still Indiana State, too. So right. that uh, you, you know, that, that also makes it a challenge to, you know, as you put, put this schedule together to be able to fit all your commitments in. Well, there. you know, there, there's 125 schools in Division One. And if you, if you think of the top five conferences, there's about 60 schools. So if everybody's trying to get seven games, you do the math. It right. doesn't work. So right. you're going to have to do uh, some. Now, maybe you can do two home and aways because you, you find some six-game opportunities. If you do something at the neutral site, it might make you net revenue neutral. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll kick the tires. I don't want to water the schedule down. I'm also not going to renege on the deals. I mean, if you're in eastern Kentucky, that was part of the Danny Hope uh, um, um, when we bought Danny's contract out, when, when he came, we, we bartered two games. This would be the second one. I wouldn't do it to an in-state school. I don't think that's right. And we've tried where we've had one AA opponents to do Midwestern type schools to one of those one AA schools where we might be paying 250 through, about 250. It's a big deal to their budgets and they plan on it. Right. And if, if you just pull that away indiscriminately, I don't think you're being good to college football and that's just not the way we manage contracts. So. Uh, I know there's some fans on the blog who think I just ripped those contracts up, <laughs> but that, that's not how you do a good business. Well, and it's not that easy either. I mean, Nevada is what a million bucks if you would cancel. Yeah, that? some of them, some of them have gone to that. We we are actually the ones who went to that because we, we don't like uh, you know people walking out on mm -hmm. us. And we do have some games. I mean, Cincinnati will be here in 16 with mm -hmm. Nevada. Nevada's got a pretty good program. So we're trying to introduce, we can do something with Missouri down the road, mm -hmm. and I think we got a couple other surprises, but let's get the, the Notre Dame thing cemented down, and then we'll, we'll come out and, and talk more about where we are. Yeah. You know, we were quoted in, a, in a, a good story in the Washington Post this week about some of the challenges that do fa does face, you know, really everybody, and, and, and that are trying to, to, trying to put fans in seats, and that is, the world of high definition and maybe a little bit of a softening mm -hmm. of demand and that those challenges are there no matter how how good your football program is. I mean, how do you continue to address that from a marketing perspective uh, as time goes on? I mean, yes, you have television revenue that offsets right. a lot of this stuff, but but you obviously also you, you want to have fans on campus yeah. as much as possible. Well, you've got to be, we have to be more consistent in the playing field and, and we need to be honest with ourselves. We have not played well at home for two years, in my opinion. We didn't play well last year and I don't think we played particularly well uh, Sands the Notre Dame game. I thought yeah, we played right. well against Notre Dame. So we're not, we're not, you know, and we're teasing our fans. We, we, in some cases, we played better on the on the road than we have at home. Um, I feel very appreciative of the fan base that's, that's stuck with us. They've been loyal. They've stayed there. Uh, you know, it, it's it's hard because we have, you know, we we obviously made a shift and are playing some of the younger guys now, and it's hard because the older guys are guys that are that are they're good people. Uh, they're good citizens, they're good teammates, uh, but the bottom line is, it, it is athletics is a results-oriented game, and if you're not producing, you really do have to let the, the let that next person have their have their shot at it. Offensively, we just got too many moving parts. I mean, you know, whether it be Jordan Roos at, at, at center who's coming along fine, or J.J. Prince moved to the outside when Gabe Holmes goes down, you, it, it, it brings Beatty into more play. He hasn't played a lot of college football. All the receivers, for the most part, are, are talented but young. It's good to see the game Cameron Posey had up in East Lansing. Mm -hmm. um, and then you, you, you bring in the backfield. Uh, you know, Cottom is running the ball effectively, but up, up until this last week, he hasn't blocked very well. And you gotta, you gotta, you're going to play in a, in a spread offense occasionally. You got to make sure you chip the guy. Now he did a much, much better job against Michigan State. So the fans see his running prowess. Uh, you know, we're looking at special teams. We're looking at the total. Uh, uh, set of plays and he's got he had to improve and, those are, and he has to his credit but you're just playing a lot of young guys and you're about to play off I mean you know in the in the game that uh, at Michigan State um, you're driving the ball we were inside their 50 uh, Danny got blindsided just like Peyton Manning got blindsided mm -hmm. the next night uh, down with the Colts and and Cottom did make a good block yeah he did uh, off the side. edge mm -hmm. and, and and Kevin didn't quite uh, right. shift the protection and before you know it, he, he, you know, you get a blind side and he goes, yep. that's happened an awful lot and it happens a lot to teams that just aren't quite synced up. Uh, you, know, we, we, uh, you know, we had a chance for a 25-yard field goal, 
Now the wind was blowing. I don't think the fans, if, if they were, you know, at the game, fully appreciated yeah. it, the wind situation. So, you know, at the end of the day, we, we've got to we got to put a good product on the field. But to your point, I think the events surrounding the uh, the activity have to continue to improve. I think they have. I think the the two eleven sessions been fun. We've had several thousand people in there before each of the games. The Boilermaker Crossing. You have to make it an event. But we're probably going to have to continue to look for things like three game series and, and packages, which we have. Those have been popular for the people who say, you know, I can't do it seven weeks. But yeah. if, if, if a neighbor and I could buddy up, you know, we could split the ticket and I'd still get decent uh, uh, seat locations. So it's an ongoing battle. But I, I think, you know, in closing on that point, I just say I think Major League Baseball had it right. I think they recognize with the, you know, they've always had more TV exposure than probably just about any sport. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think you're, you're at a point where probably smaller, more compact stadiums are, uh, mm -hmm. are, are probably an asset. So in some respects, I'd like to have the East Deck very badly because I'd like to have that revenue and I'd like to have it all full. But there's a piece of me that says I'd rather have 50 to 55,000 tight so we don't have the two holes in both end zones. So we have, we have some work to do and need to keep our fans engaged as well. Are you, I don't know how you would answer this. Are you, <laughs> are you surprised by the record in football right now? Yeah, I thought it would be a little better. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, to be honest with you, uh, we, we haven't played a bad schedule. <laughs> and and I, don't, yeah. I don't think we ever want to make excuses about that, so I'm not going to. So, we, we, you know, I thought that we, out of the games we've played, uh, you know, I felt like we played well at Notre Dame, I felt like we played well at Michigan State. I felt like the other games, the, the, the snowball started coming yeah. down the hill and we just didn't, we couldn't respond. Right. And, uh, so I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm disappointed that we haven't shown improvement. The, the record will take care of itself if we play up to our potential. And I thought the way we practiced in the in the August time frame, I thought we'd be a little better. And, and we're just we, we weren't a confident team at the end of last year. Right. We are still not a confident team. And uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, when you put we've, we've now gone and given these younger guys an opportunity, which will pay dividends later. But it's kind of bumpy right now. We know that. And, and again, the, the gauntlet schedule continues on, on Saturday with Ohio State. But you know, you look at this, and you and you and in, in, in competitive athletics, it, there's always opportunity. And, and yet, do you look? Daryl Hazel has said very clearly, and you're, we ask you every year, well, when do you when do you evaluate your coaches? You always say, well, we do this. We sit down at the end of the season. Daryl's been very pointed about saying, hey, evaluate us at the end of the year. What uh, short of victories? What do you what what do you want to see in the last? Uh, uh, I'd like five see, weeks. I'd like to see these young kids play the way I think they're capable of mm -hmm. playing. They, they got to forget about, and I think Danny Etling's comments this week uh, I, I, are representative of what I want this team to feel like. Forget the score. Yeah. We got too much scoreboard watching. Play the game. Go out and, and play to the best of your ability. And, and you know, Stacey, I was listening to your last segment. Danny, don't double clutch. If you make a mistake, you make the mistake. There was a kid who right. was number 15 once upon a time. As a sophomore and freshman, he threw a lot of picks. Yeah. yeah. Go, you know, go for it. And he'll learn as he goes. Uh, but that's what I want. I want to see that. And on the defensive side of the ball, you know, I think the 3-4 has worked. It's, it's, it's allowed us to put some big guys in the jack linebacker, both Ryan and Jelani. And we need that right now. We just aren't physical enough at linebacker to uh, – mm -hmm to play the teams that are going to come downhill. And, and the Big Ten, the schools we played, Wisconsin, Michigan State, Nebraska, and now Ohio State, they're all downhill teams. They're going to come at you until they, they suck you in, and then they're going to play play action pass. So you know what's coming. But you got to have big physical guys that can uh, can do that. And uh, the linebacker piece was, was, a, was a puzzle. So I think the fact that these coaches have adjusted, I think, is important. They didn't give up on the older guys. I think everybody got a fair shot. And, you know, I mean, Rob Henry is, is to me, uh, the classic uh, kid who, who, who doesn't who accept accountability. In this world, we sh shrug accountability. This kid, he acknowledged that, that it wasn't going well, and he said, hey, just tell me what you want me to do. And I've seen him on special teams, you know, backing up free safety. He's still positive on that field. I thought, you know, good for you. This is a hard life lesson, but later on in life, he'll end up running a company and be a very successful guy. I mentioned earlier, I think you were in here at the time, I'm not sure, about how this team needs to handle what's going on right now and how do they find kind of the belief that they can still get this done. You've been in meetings, team mm -hmm. meetings, you've been in film sessions and all of those kind of things. How, how do you think the guys are responding behind the scenes? I, I think the, the younger guys are, are, they haven't been clouded by the past. Mm -hmm. 
mm. variability. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're kind of there. I think the older guys want to do it. Uh, I think Daryl's doing exactly what he needs to do right now, which is to do this. You can't, right now, his personality going up and down is not gonna, gonna, gonna help. So I, I think that he's, you're, he's doing what he needs to do. I, I do think they practice better than they play in the game. And part of that is that, you know, they get down a score and all of a sudden, and we just haven't had a game where all of a sudden you get one or two scores and you get out to the races and all of a sudden you got the other team on, on the defensive side. Right. We haven't done that yet. So uh, there, I, I don't think the mood's bad. I don't think we've got a contentiousness, but you, you're playing a lot of young guys. And for the future, that's helpful for the, for the current day. It just you, You're going to ride or fall depending upon how consistent they are on a particular day. All right, we're going to take a, we're going to come up for breath or let Morgan do that more than anything, and, and we'll come back uh, in two minutes. And uh, stay put, because we'll have to talk more, more of uh, Purdue football, but also Morgan's uh, other job, which is uh, uh, in administration, administrating really some of the future of college athletics. And we'll hit that and more in our last segment on Golden Black Live. Purdue students, find your home away from home with Basham Rentals. Trusted for three generations to provide quality student housing. We are now leasing for next year, so call us to learn about our apartments and townhomes, all located at the edge of campus. We're eager to share information on our many units, supported by 24-hour maintenance. Basham Rentals. Call us at 743-8367 or look for us online at mybashamrentals.com or boilerapartments.com. Going to the Purdue game? Stay at Hilton Garden Inn, West Lafayette, at the Wabash Landing. Your family will love the well-appointed guest rooms, the pool, Whirlpool, Fitness Center, the breakfast buffet, and the amazing Hilton Garden Inn staff. Located just four blocks from Purdue University, Hilton Garden Inn has long been the choice for Purdue fans. Call today for a reservation and make Hilton Garden Inn your number one choice. Than the players on the field, more than coaches on the sidelines, more than the fans in the stands, more than just scores at the end of the night. It's the action, the stories, the heroes. It's the Friday Night Frenzy. It's the Friday Night Frenzy, and it's only on News 18. High school football from where you live. Segment three, Golden Black Live. It's the best hour of the week. It's Friday afternoon. It's right before Purdue football game. So uh, nothing going on this weekend at all. But Morgan uh, Burke, Stacey Clarity joining me. And uh, lots of questions of which I, we have, I've totally been rem uh, remiss in getting to. But Stacey, uh, would, would let's talk with Maryland and Rutgers. I don't know exactly what the question was, but uh, what, was, what was on the chat yeah. board about there? Well, they, I think the question was why. Yeah. And. Uh, I, I, the response I would uh, supply is number one, they are two very, very strong uh, public research institutions. So the decision in the Big Ten is always going to be predicated first on the academic fit. And, and that may not be what other conferences are doing, but we're not a professional sports franchise. We are a collection of universities that are large research universities. Second thing is Rutgers and Maryland are, are contiguous to Pennsylvania. So we continue to have a situation at least we don't have anybody jumping over four states to go into, a, into another uh, uh, conference. Uh, purely from an athletic standpoint, well, let me start from a student recruitment standpoint first. That's a very populated corridor of our country from Washington up to, yeah. to New England where we have a lot of students and the Big Ten should be a, should be a player in that, in that area for students. 
Uh, there's also a high socioeconomic background, so there's people who can afford to pay for an out-of-state uh, uh, tuition. Purely from an athletics uh, standpoint, once you get over the academic hurdle, you say to yourself, are you going to let the ACC control mm -hmm. the, the Eastern Seaboard? And then you got the Pac-12 over here, you got the SEC down here, and you got the pretty soon you become an island. And the, you know the, the demographics uh, of, in this country are changing. And so therefore, if you want to be relevant 10 years from now or 15 years from now, you better look at geography. And yes, there are a lot of eyeballs between uh, Maryland and, and up into, into New York and the New England area, and that'll obviously have an impact on the Big Ten network. So you, you know, if there's going to be consolidation, you probably got started when Notre Dame made their move. Uh, things had kind of quieted down a, a little bit, and when they made their move, I think that started off another um, uh, thing and I, you know, it all it all really probably traces back in some respects to the, the demise of the Big East. Yeah, on that front. There was another question just for an update on the South End Zone. Yeah, project. we uh, we've we're going to meet with HNTB and some senior managers on campus uh, in mid November just to kind of get that group up to speed. Um, my my hope is that we would undertake the marketing study. Uh, that would go along with the schematic design during the second uh, semester of the first half of 2014. Um, I think we'll have a better idea of the order of magnitude uh, uh, and, and what we have to do fundraising versus uh, other sources by, by June. It's probably a one-year cycle to do it from the time you begin paperwork to the time you uh, be, uh, complete it. So, I don't think we could be any earlier in 2016. Mm. Okay. And that would be the most optimistic as you'd start in 15. Um, and so again, it's, it's a little bit like what we did Ross say the, the first time. You gotta, we wanna see the team start to, to move because that'll get the fan base excited. But the, uh, you know, it's, it's gotta get done. And to me, I still view this as step one, step two. Still you have that deck on the east side as a, as a outlier that may be a few years further out but I think that's still the ultimate configuration that Purdue should be targeting. And we've had questions on uh, and you're certainly in your role as an athletic director and, and as in your role as, as in terms of leadership among athletic directors in the United States and in the NCAA what uh, the pay for play got you on Twitter for one yeah, thing which is a that? huge thing I still have more followers than you I checked out yeah, this morning which I know <laughs> will not last long. Yeah. But in fact, probably after today, I'll be, I'll be behind. But uh, <laughs> uh, no, in all seriousness, you, you look at that and you have, um, uh, you know, first, uh, just from your job satisfaction, being able to be in those types of situations to, to set policy or to lead policy, um, uh, how has that been for you in, 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 well, in terms of what, uh, you know, from your weekly job satisfaction? I, uh, I, I probably picked the wrong year to be the Division I AD uh, yeah. president. but. Yeah, I, I, I do think that, that I have a responsibility now with this, this experience base to weigh in on things where I, where I have an opinion. And I guess that's one of the benefits of being in the fourth quarter of your career is that you, you know, I'm not going to be disrespectful, but I'm going to advocate for things that, uh, that I think are right or, or, or question things that I don't think are right. So uh, I'm happy to be in the debate. It's taken a little bit more time. Uh, than I'd like. Uh, we're trying to get our good colleague Tom Ryder back to work yeah, yeah. Uh, because we're, we're, we're kind of short-handed right now and Tom's progressing well and hopefully we'll get him back uh, a little part-time here before the end of the end of the year. But you know the, the national debate is is ripe and uh, we need to be part of it. Yeah. And you've been pretty well, pretty uh, outspoken and also articulating that message about the, about pay for play and, and some of the things that, that go along with it Talk a little bit about that, and just yeah. and, and what what message, if you could say to anybody, uh, relatively concisely, this is the thing, this is the issue you really should be thinking. Well, about. Well, I, I think you need to understand that a, that a scholarship athlete, or a full scholarship athlete at Purdue in any sport, uh, walks away. If you take the value of their scholarship at two hundred thousand dollars, the value of the services they touch every day, the sports performance, the trainers, the the uh, SIDs, just those services they touch. That's worth another $50,000 over five years. So that's a quarter of a million dollars worth of benefits. If you're Pell Grant eligible, because of your socioeconomic background, the government policy will pay you $5,600 a year. That's $28,000 over a five-year period. Then you put on top of that that, that, a, that a kid could come out of Purdue. If they have to take out a student loan, they could be looking at $200,000 payback. So tell me we're not 
we're not providing value. People are looking at a narrow slice. They're looking at Johnny Manziel, and that's their poster child, you're, you're, or the EA Sports. EA Sports, which was the, the college football game, that each of the universities would license the use of their marks and logos, that was worth about $20,000 to us last year. I mean, is that, yeah. gonna, is, that gonna, is that gonna make the deal? No. So I think we gotta be very strong on pay for play for, for people who are advocates of that. I, I probably would disagree with, with Jay Billis on, on his views on this. I think if you wanna go pro, go pro. They have a different model. I would agree with fans that we have slipped. We're, down on, we're going down a slope that I don't like right now and we need, to, we need to push it back a bit. And I think part of the NCA reform has got to look at that entire issue. The cost of attendance, there is a gap between the definition of the scholarship as it exists today and the miscellaneous expenses that a student has. We should look at that. We have some resources. Uh, we're not giving them a full scholarship when we say it's a full scholarship. So there's some things that we need to get after, but at the end of the day, we're not gonna pay the quarterback this and the you know, the, the women's volleyball player, this. We're, we're, that, that just doesn't fit in college athletics. So you, the, sti the quote-unquote stipend or some amount of, uh, to, to make up that difference, you would, you're a proponent of it. Yeah, you, you just have to, you have to come up with an amount that would be comparable for everybody across the country because and the, and the cost of attendance is a little bit, uh, it will be skewed based upon Basically. the geography and where you live. So if you came up with $2,000, an interesting statistic, if you go back into the 60s, when there was a $15 a month incidental expense, right. they called it laundry money. Take that times 12 months, that's $180. Go from the 1960s to 2013 at 5% a year, it's $2,000. Yeah. So I don't know that we're really plowing new turf. We're recognizing that there's, there's a gap there and that should be, should be covered. But don't delude yourself into thinking that there isn't a, there's been a significant investment in coaches. There's also been a significant investment in resource. You look at what we did with Dwayne Carlisle and his staff and all the, the weight rooms, the nutritionists, the sports psychologists, ton of assets that are being made available to them. It just doesn't come in a paycheck. Yeah. I will do another question if oh, you don't away. have any on there. Um, I'm not, not connected for some reason, okay. reason but it's okay. What, uh, I don't know if there's a name on this, Harry, it looks like Harry is asking um, about the improvement in the game day atmosphere for football, I'm guessing specifically with the DJ and the atmosphere around I, all that. You know, you the only thing, it, I think the feedback's been pretty good. I mm -hmm. think we had some feedback early on from people on the uh, east side of the stadium that couldn't hear the band very well. And, and there were some technic def technical difficulties getting the miking system to work, mm -hmm. which I think we got rectified. The people said, why did we move the band? And I said, I didn't move the band. The band asked to move. Yeah. The band asked to move next to the, because they wanted to be part of the student section. And I, I think that makes sense. The DJ helps uh, just, it, it, they're all on headsets. You've got the DJ, you've got our, our marketing people, you've got uh, Jay Gephardt. They're all talking about, you know, where we are in the game and what would be the best, uh, you know, so it, it, you know, clearly you want the band, but you also are gonna have some live music. I, I think right now, I like to see it play out, but I think for the most part, it's been pretty positive. I was just saying, I, I had a question, that, okay. since then now I do have one. I get quite, I, we even get questions as if we were setting policy, but to, on, all right, Nebraska comes and they buy, and they buy some of our, some of Purdue's uh, season tickets mm -hmm. in the world of StubHub, that happens, and That's it's gonna day. happen tomorrow uh, as well. Uh, how, do you view, how do you view that in terms of that? Is it as simple as, you have a better product on the field, do you retain those folks, or do you see that as a big issue one way or the other? It's, it's not an issue I can control, and so you got to worry about the things you can control. Getting a better product on the field, I have some level of control over that in terms of hiring the coaching staff. Um, you know, I, I, I don't, you know, StubHub, if you don't have a secondary market, people are going to go to eBay, or they're going to go out in the streets mm -hmm. and sell them. So it, it, it's, it's out there. So you either create a marketplace or you don't. Now, one thing that I will I want to look at at the end of the uh, of the year is that some of the professional franchises have brought those market house, those uh, uh, marketplaces in house, in -house right. and I'd like to I'd like to better understand uh, the dynamics and what that what that really means. But you know, at the end of the day, we've got fans. I you know I was in Michigan State last week, and there were Purdue people on the 50 yard line. Somehow they got those tickets, and, yeah. and you know, it could have been a neighbor, or it could have been StubHub. Uh, the thing I don't, the thing that I worry about, not worry, but it's, it's a dilemma. We're trying to keep the south end zone at a, at a very family-friendly price. Yeah. But when you do that at $98 for the season, 
at, at Ohio State or Nebraska will come in, buy that ticket, then they'll flood the secondary market for you know a couple bucks on, on StubHub. And and I don't know how to. I want to take care of our our yeah. <laughs> families, but I but I'm not eager to, to 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 create a downer on our our ticket base. So we got a you know StubHub is a marketing partner. We get a we get a few pennies back from them uh, on on each transaction, but. You know, I don't know how to solve that dilemma. And if, if any of the fans have good ideas on how to be friendly to your customers, but not not uh, flood stub, I'm, I'm all ears. In a free market society, I had somebody. It's pretty hard. I, I, I somebody asked me as if I was personally responsible for it, and um, I said, no. I, I think it's a hard one to. In, in the, people have an opportunity to make choice, and that's mm -hmm. uh, and they can do that when they're spending that kind of money. Any other questions you want to ask? Are you wearing all black on Saturday? I will. I, I've got almost all black on today. I've got a black <laughs> and white shirt and black slacks, but I thought I thought for today I would have a gold sweater. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm kind of excited about tomorrow. I, I know people are, are you know, I, to me, having watched them now, you know, since they made the change, I, I, I can see some things that, that get me a little bit excited. Now, I want to see them go onto the, onto the field, but you have some talent. Now we just got to get that. I wish I could age the talent faster for the mm -hmm. fan base. I, I, I know how frustrated uh, they are, and you know, I, my email box fills up on the weekends too. And all I can say is that we're we're going to do everything we can. We we made a commitment to this program. We've invested heavily. We've taken some risk uh, financially to to do it. But I think it was. I, I have at the end of the day, our fans will will stay with us, and Daryl Hazel will get the job done. You know, you look at a guy, Daryl, in 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 the world of having to spend. $2 million for coaches, and that's the, that's the marketplace these days. Um, is, there a, is there a stopping point for this? I mean, a, a, do you think there's, a, or is there another plateau that uh, this will be, we'll be talking not just uh, uh, past inflationary uh, figures, you're talking about uh, the $10 million coaches down the road? Or no, do I don't think so. And I, I think, again, I think the uh, NFL can be instructive here. I think the NFL finally got to the point where they didn't recycle coaches or go for the hottest new coach. Mm -hmm. And you know, Tony Dungy wasn't the hottest new coach, and you can go around the league and have other other examples. And then once they produced, they got paid very well. But when they went back out into the marketplace, they didn't feel compelled to, to go out and spend the dollars. I think the college and marketplace is going to learn that. Let's face it, I don't see another run up in ticket prices. You might be able to get inflationary adjustments. I'm not sure that you, you're, the, the trajectory that you're on with media rights will continue. In fact, if anything were to happen, as I pointed out in the Washington Post article, if anything were to happen to the, the cable, the unbundled, uh, the, the cable channels, you, you could find that those media rights agreements, those companies could be coming back to you saying, you know, we just can't fulfill that commitment. We'd like to, but it's cha we have a changed condition. You know, that happened in the private sector. Yeah, sure. It leads all the way down to people being asked to renegotiate contracts. So I'm not saying that'll happen, but I, you know, as I told Sally in my interview, I said, you know, you, we, our job as an athletic director is to look at all levels of risk and try to mitigate. So I don't think it'll go much higher. You're going to have the outliers like Saban and, and others, Urban Meyer, but you know, I, I, I think you're probably at a point where I don't think people can can go that much further. And I, quite frankly, but for you know the fans getting so insistent that if you don't invest the big money, you're not getting the right coach. It's, it's not a rational business sense. There, there are good coaches out there who've come in, done good jobs. You know, Brian Kelly was a good coach at Central Michigan, became a good coach at Cincinnati. Okay, he earned his right to move on to, to Notre, uh, Notre Dame and, and be paid the way he's being paid. But you can turn around how quickly a coach can, you know, they lose a little bit of that luster in a couple, three years that the fan base is on them. And they may have made a lot of money for a short period of time to be out of, uh, of work. So it's a high risk, high reward profession. Yeah, no question on that front. Oh, I'd still like that $2 million. Yeah, well, I, I, <laughs> I keep now. saying that. I keep saying that. I know you put, yeah. might be in the same boat. But, uh, you know, you look at Daryl Hazel and, 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 and that personality, and, and really it's been interesting to watch since December the 5th or whatever day the rest of us first mm -hmm. got a chance to meet him. Same guy that you interviewed in, yeah. in the, in, 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 at the airport to, uh, the first time when you met him for the first yeah, time. I, yeah, I'm, he's done everything I could ask him to do. And uh, he's, uh, he's smart. Um, uh, he understands uh, some of the, the, the pressures that come into my office, um, and um, he's, he's been in big time situations. Now, in many cases, he was the, the observer as mm -hmm. opposed to the, to the main, but he's, he's learned under some great people, uh, at West Virginia and 
he was at Rutgers, and he was at, you know, of course, at Ohio State Army. Uh, so he's, he's, he's seen it, and for a guy, he has a very youthful image for the amount of experience that he has. And uh, he's an effective recruiter. Uh, he's good at managing the tempo of the team. Um, you know, he wants, he, I'm sure he goes home and kicks the, kicks the door or lets off his tension whatever way he lets, lets it off. But he's one of those guys not going to let you, you're not going to see him sweat. Yeah. You're not going to see him. You would agree with that, wouldn't you? Yeah, we never see him. <laughs> no, he's amazing. <laughs> but that's him. All right, one last question, and we're, we're past, our, past our hour here. Men's, men's and women's basketball, both programs that uh, maybe I, the only one that draws this correlation, but kind of two old school coaches in, in Matt Painter and Sharon Versip uh, that, that want to do it the Indiana basketball or traditional way to some extent. Both have interesting uh, challenges this year. Uh, what do you see from from, from well, starting the, with the Sharon's group? I mean, they have first exhibition games. People will see them Sunday, Sunday at two o'clock. Right. Yep. Right. Uh -huh. uh, they they are faster than uh, fast. Um, the question will be, can they rebound effectively? Uh, now, I'm sorry, Taylor Manuel decided to to go to a Division two school, but I understand that it wasn't the priority that that needs to be at this level if you want to be successful. So that, that puts a lot of pressure on Lisa Clemens and Whitney Bays, who's yep. a new player coming in, and to some extent Camille Redmond. So they can all shoot and they can run. And, and I think the 10 second rule, which will come in for yeah. the women this year, will have, a, have an interesting twist for them. So I think they will be, uh, uh, you've got, you know, Courtney's already preseason, uh, all Big Ten pick, KK. As back, you know, April was good last year. You got some talented freshmen. She's got a good stable, and, and the group that she'll bring in and announce here in a week or so is is, yeah. is top flight. So she's she's rolling, and she's a, she's a great coach, and and uh, will do a fine job. Matt's case, I, I really like what he's got more interchangeable parts this year than he's had. Now, I was sitting there with Kate on uh, the the night of the exhibition game because that was Tuesday night, and I said with about eight minutes to go up. 18 points. Well, this is over. And I said, nah. I said, it's not. She says, well, why do you say that? And I said, well, because they're playing like their hair is on fire. Yeah. And, and she said, well, what do you mean by that? And I said, well, they all want to put the dagger in. So they're all going to, they were jacking three pointers and, and yeah, they'll get over that. Uh, and I've seen them hit those three pointers. So there may be a game when they hit about eight, eight in a row, but I, I like the way they're playing. I am concerned about some of the, um, officiating changes yeah, we've made. I think, I think we're going to have to see how that plays out. I, I think people in the stands are going to get real bored of watching 70, 80 free throws a game. I, I just, I, and, and I, they, they've made some changes. They think will free up the offensive people, but the, the hand checking, you know, maybe you can get by with, although I thought that the referees called it much tighter. If they just called the rule the way it, it is, they'd be okay. The part that I, I don't like is it, it's going to get very hard to, to uh, draw a charge. So you, you get inside that lane, you're going to get fouled. A guy like Tyrone Johnson, if he can shoot 70, 75 percent, which is about where he got to last year, and Bryson Scott, who is a very good free throw, they'll make a living at the line. What mm -hmm. Bryson the other night had nine, yeah. I think nine out of and ten. Yeah, nine out of ten. So I, I, I think they'll be good, and and, and I, you know, the, both the big guys uh, have, as you reported, have, have worked hard. You know, AJ Ham is not a bad kid, yeah. but there are consequences, uh, and we have. If you want the privilege, you have to accept the consequences. He hasn't pouted. He understands what he's got to do. If he does it, there'll not, not be an issue. If he doesn't do it, then you won't play for Purdue. That's just the way it is. And uh, I don't think it'll ever come to that, but we're not going to sacrifice the values just to, to, to win a game. And he needs, he, he, I think, has a sense right now that, that he wants to be part of this team. I think he knows he has a bright future. And as I always remind people, when I was 20 years old, I did some things that maybe if you all knew about, <laughs> You know, my dad knew about. It. I'd be in trouble too. So I don't think we all need to get up and, and pound on him. He's he's a young kid. He made a mistake, and and for him, unlike you and I, as a as a normal student, we wouldn't get called out. Nobody'd even know. But he has to sit on that bench in street clothes. So it's kind of a double whammy. And it's you know these kids, uh, it, it 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 wears on them in terms of their own psyche. So we need to give him a little support and realize we've. We put him in the woodshed. He's back out. Let's get him through these next two games. Get on the season. All right. Well, uh, well said, and we appreciate uh, your comments and Stacy your questions, and and uh, we will 
do this again. We do this at least once a year and I'm, sometimes twice. I'm happy to come on whenever you want. Okay, every other week is problem. fine. Well, that may be a little bit over, over the time. <laughs> the, pres the president was on a couple weeks ago, and he said, yeah, yeah, I'll, go away. yeah I'll come back. And I said, that's You can good. come back and announce the Notre Dame deal. There you go. There you go. There All you right, go. there you go. All right. We appreciate you watching as well. We want to thank our sponsors, Triple X, uh, Basham Reynolds, Hilton Garden, in-state farm agent Trent Johnson for joining us. If you missed part of this show, you don't want to miss a second of it. Uh, you can, uh, we'll archive it and have it on ab about dinner time. They're archived on WLFI.com from now till the end of time as well. <laughs> so you can always go back and watch them as well. But we thank you and we'll have a great, have a great weekend. We'll look for a, hopefully a competitive football game tomorrow and uh, have more to talk about leading into next week's football game against Iowa a week from now on Golden Black Live.